this is Roger, thanks for dropping by. Bit of a disaster on the computer. Um, I needed to tidy up. The problem with doing um, lots of videos in advance is the way that YouTube works now. It always used to pick my front banner, you know, my sort of orange and black bit at the beginning, as one of the thumbnails. Well, quite often nowadays it doesn't and that's I want that as my startup I don't I don't want just a random clip that YouTube chooses um, which means I have to open my software up and uh, the software I use to make the videos I have to open that up and take a snapshot and um, to do that I need to have all the clips available to load the video to take the snapshot to make my own customized thumbnail which is a bit of a pain so all that backlog of videos and everything I've had to keep all the clips <laughs> well as they've all been used now and I've run out of videos um, I had a really good tidy up um, yeah it's just the way YouTube works it just gives me an extra faff um, but I, I'm you know I mean I, I still prefer my videos to start with that banner heading they're recognizable from from that you know you pick them out from the bunch sort of principle um, <clears throat> after everything was in the lounge obviously I've still got watering to catch up I did some yesterday and um, it's amazing how much water gets on the floor at the moment the floor's quite dry from being absolutely soaking wet yesterday after doing the mounts well I'll be doing the mounts again today um, but one thing that did dawn on me is that um, the air plant spent you know the two days in the house they must have badly dehydrated out of their you know moist atmosphere and everything so I'll give them a soak <laughs> and update my notes accordingly that's I don't feed these very often, but I thought as I need to top my diesel trays up and they need the lowest level feed possible, but they do need some feed, um, that's actually 40 parts per million. So hardly worth bothering, but a little bit of feed for the air plants and then uh, use some of that water to top my diesel trays up. They get watered from the bottom. Um, <clears throat> and then the rest of the day will be, uh, well, not all day, We'll be going around the plants. And trouble is I didn't update my notes. When I took the plants into the lounge, I had some water ready and quite a lot of them were dry. So I watered them and took them into the lounge while I was sorting the cleaning up. But I didn't make notes of which ones I did. <laughs> so I'm literally having to go around all the plants this time and actually see if they're wet <laughs> rather than just knowing that they need watering, which is a bit of a faff. Um, but I'm getting through the process of the rationalisation slowly but surely and uh, I'll show you what I've uh, what conclusions I've come to at the end of the day and um, yeah so I'll, I'll that'll be the video for today basically I'll see if I find anything new as I go round but uh, yeah I've run out of old videos to post when I don't feel like filming <laughs> so computer is nice and tidy but uh, yeah, I'm totally out of clips and everything now, so uh, you know, I'll get on with some things. Now that's a bit worrying and probably won't show up on the camera, but you remember what I said when you're looking for bugs, is anything on the leaves that you don't recognise has to come under suspicion. Well, those tiny, like, white dots, which as I said, probably don't show up that well, um, I've got the magnifying glass out and I can see no movement as such but that looks incredibly like the um, the non-red spider mites so uh, I think it's spray time yeah it's difficult to tell um, I mean the red spider mites I've, I've had once or twice over the years and quite honestly I can see them and the telltale test is to rub over the area with your thumb and if it looks rusty then that's red spider mite but there's another type quite common on orchids which are more awkward to get rid of they're a sort of yellowy palish colour anyway I think I'll knock a spray up just the non-toxic stuff so uh, just the soapy wash stuff that I've got I'll show you 
it's this stuff and um, this is a it's non-toxic it's basically a, a, a soapy wash type thing um, based on plant extracts and things I think but whatever it is it's non-toxic completely harmless and it works by smothering so the only way this actually works is to completely cover every part of the plant with the liquid once it's mixed up and then it works by suffocation um, no systemic function so it only kills what it smothers during that application but it's got um, it's got some plant boosters in it as well which work like a foliar feed and it's also got an additive that um, stops it forming little dots it just makes a nice even coating over the plants I've got some more of this on order because there's not a lot in there <laughs> I'll probably have enough to make up a litre or two and um, any white dots I see on plants any signs that plant can get sprayed those without any signs this time round I'll just miss out on the grounds I haven't got much of this until my new stuff arrives um, and this is something that you know if you've got bugs things like spider mites you just have to repeat because there's no systemic function you just have to keep going um, I'd say probably weekly which suits me because that's somewhere near the frequency that I water so you know each plant that I see that's got any signs of bugs of any sort doesn't matter um, the fact that it works by smothering it works on practically everything um, but it specifically says spider mites mealybugs scale it even works on mildew so um, it, it's it's a very good non-toxic spray which you can use safely around your pets and uh, you know, you don't have to worry about scrubbing your hands every time you get some on and all that sort of stuff. So it's a nice safe one to use. Um, so I'll knock some up and any signs I see on individual plants, they can get a spray this time round. And by the time I come round to watering next time, I'll have some new stocks. And then I can do the plants I missed out, just in case, because it does no harm and um, repeat treatment for those that I did this time round but I'm not going to get far, there's not much in there I'll see what I can do but that little fern has definitely got white dots on it um, and obviously spider mites can move from plant to plant so if you've got them you've got no guarantee they're only on one plant but they will have their favourites like all bugs <laughs> probably just tastier but um, they seem almost harmless because they are so minute but they basically take the surface layer off the leaves and afterwards the leaves can deteriorate quite badly because they've had their surface bitten off basically so they are a flipping nuisance I think Danny's just having a, a session with the little blighters as well um, she's got her own mix that she mixes up herself which over the years she's found works and if it works well use it that's the way I say it but anyway, we'll, uh, we'll have a spray round today, I think. It's coming to that time of year where the bugs get going. Not only your plants come into growth, so do the bugs. I'm sure a lot of them just lurk in the winter, sort of on the top of the media and around the base of the plant. And then come the better weather, they get going as well, little tykes. Well, the other thing I forgot to say about that spray is you get a bonus. Because you have to totally soak the plant, every bit of it, underside of the leaves, leaves, stems, everything. After two or three applications, you've got shiny clean leaves because it gets all the dust off and it effectively gives your whole plant a wash um, and saves you doing it manually with cotton wool flipping pads and stuff like that, which is so tedious. That really gets me down having to do that. So you end up removing all the dust and everything from your leaves without clogging them up you know and you get shiny clean leaves after just probably two maybe three applications and if you're going to do it weekly to make sure you keep on top of bugs you will end up with shiny clean plants and because of the foliar feed in there you do get a little bit of a bonus it does green up the leaves a bit so it's not a bad spray while the shelf's cleared off I need to get that fogger down because it's not going to work where it is it's just going to blast my um, non cane dendrobiums with icy cold mist so that's no good the buds will drop um, so it's going to have to go somewhere else and I really don't like that bright orange thing it stood on that's going to have to go I'll have to sort something out for it though I do need it in here and I need it attached to the um, hydrostat so uh, 
but I'll get it out for today. That's the important thing is to get it out of the way and um, it can't really go back on that shelf. I can't find other places for the long cane dendrobiums. That's where they live. So it's the fogger that's going to have to move. Right, that's sorted that fogger out and got rid of that horrible red thing. Um, I forgot that I actually bought a brand new hydrostat when I thought the other one was broken. So basically I wired the fogger into this one. Um, that's the thermostat for the inlet and outlet fans so they can just sit there together. Um, and I don't need to touch either of those very frequently. So, uh, oh, and it's working good. It's just cut out at the appropriate point. So everything's set up and working. I've um, sort of secured the wires so they don't really so they don't get in the way of the plants or catch on things. That's the only reason they're sort of tied on. And um, yeah, so that's that's two foggers on the go. Now I've got to find what the hell I did with the third one. <laughs> I just wanted to show this plant. This is the plant, as far as I know, the only plant I've ever had that actually got the red spider mites. And although most of the old leaves have gone now from those days, this leaf still remains. So if you want to see what the aftermath of red spider mites looks like, that's what it'll do if it gets out of hand. They destroy the leaf surface and then that destruction of all the surface cells leaves the leaf very prone to infections and other things. So uh, yeah, that's the aftermath of after they're gone. And even though this plant's never had mites since, it's gonna get a spray anyway, <laughs> just in case. I've got the spray mixed up, why not? Sometimes you make a mistake and something magical happens. This thing has had so many swear words issued in its direction, it's uh, unbelievable. And basically when I first got it, it said you must store it in that sort of thing. Yeah, so I did. And every time I took it out of the storage fluid in the cap, I couldn't get the thing to steady down for at least half an hour. It just went all over the flipping place, totally unreliable, so I stopped using it. Well then, a while ago, I got it out, and I thought I'd give it another go. And, um, okay, by a mistake, I tried to get the thing to settle down in RO water, which is not the best of ideas, because there's nothing to read, it just doesn't work properly. Um, but when I put it in some water with some feed already in it at a known level, it settled down quite quickly. Yeah. Well, then I used it a few times, and I used it a few times, and when I'd finished that particular watering session, by mistake, I just left it. And ever since then, it's worked. So that sat in a known amount of fertilised water. If I turn that on, it'll read 6.8. Virtually guarantee it. Six point eight. Now, obviously, when I use it, it's going in fertilizer that's about the same strength as that. So I don't even need to rinse it. All I need to do is just put it back in there and make sure I top that up, and it doesn't get too low. And as long as that comes out of that water at six point eight, it works. Then, when I use it in possibly different levels of feed or feed that's had its pH adjusted. It works. There's nothing wrong with the flipping thing. But the instructions that came with it, I'm totally ignoring. And all the advice you get about storing these things, I'm totally ignoring. By standing it in fertilised RO water, the flipping thing works. So I've got something I can use now. After all this time. It just simply happened as a mistake. And it just seems to have kicked it back into life. Just goes to show how much water used to go into that carpet. Um, I mean, a lot of that over there is where I've been um, spraying the soapy stuff. Um, I just sprayed it over in that area, so that's extra water went there. But this amount of water here is just splashing around, and that's without water in the mounts and letting them drip. So, uh, yeah, that all used to go in the carpet. It has created a minor problem, because now the bottom of my feet are staying very wet and I'm walking it all into the house. 
because obviously I'm walking in and out frequently, topping up water, topping up sprays, having a coffee, and that's all walking in the house onto this carpet now. So I'm definitely going to need a mat, and I think I may need a mat for just inside the door as well. A sort of wipe my feet mat before I get it all over the lounge carpet. Still, you have to play with these things till they settle down. Um, I'm pleased I got that fogger wired in. That was a faff. <laughs> the, um, you know, quite honestly, these things work well, but they are really fiddly to wire because the holes that the wires go in are so small. And, um, you know, obviously I'm working with, well, certainly two of the wires that went in there are mains cable. Um, you know, actually 13 amp type cable. The cable on the actual fogger is just 5 amp, so that's quite thin. So that went in easy. It's just the, you know, the big fat ones like that that are a pain. Anyway, it's wired in. Um, it seems to be reading true, which is good. Um, it's, um, <clears throat> I forgot what I set it to now. I think I set it to 70s, didn't I? 68. Let me take that back up to 70 because this is an accurate one. Whereas the older one, <laughs> oh well, now I'm impressed. They both say 77, so because uh, this one was deemed faulty, I've managed to drop some water inside the um, sensor, and that's open circuitry in there. So uh, I deemed it broken, but after it dried out and I played with the settings, I actually managed to get it to work again which is why that new one over there never got used. It never came out of the box, because I sort of fixed the old one, if you see what I mean. Anyway, the only, it's not a problem, but obviously they're gonna work independently now, because that one's got its own hydrostat. So that'll come and go as, where did I put the sensor? Round there, as that sensor kicks in. Whereas this one comes and goes when this sensor kicks in. So they're totally independent now. But uh, yeah, um, that seems a reasonable place for it. Um, the fog literally comes right up over there and then uh, once it gets about a foot, 18 inches or so away from the nozzle, it's not a cold, really cold mist at that point because it's, it's effectively a vapor. Um, and most of the time when that's on, the fans will be on. They're not on today because it's a cooler day and I'm working out here. So uh, all the fans are, well, the computer fans stay on permanently, but the, the bigger fans are off today. So uh, yeah, a little bit of fiddling around, bits of adjustment, you know, water everywhere. <laughs> Don't need a fogger with that much water floating around. But some of that I presume does soak into the concrete and a lot of it is going to evaporate, especially when we get the warmer weather. So, um, quite honestly, just by throwing some water around the concrete floor, when I know I'm going to get a, a, a very warm day, um, with the circulating fans, the foggers won't have to work anywhere near as hard now, because um, that's direct evaporation. So, uh, yeah, it should work okay. Um, where the other fogger is, I don't know. I'm going to have to find it. I definitely had three. I'm going to go back and look at an old video. I'm sure I had one here last year. I had one there, and I had one sat there that was wired into the inlet and the extractor fans, so that when they came on to change the air, the extra fogger kicked in. I know I had three. Oh well, it'll turn up. Things like that do. <laughs> I just thought I'd show you the... I've been doing in my notes with this rationalization stuff. You won't be able to see that, will you? Bigger. Oh, not that big. <laughs> You'll be able to see one letter. Let's try that. That's better. You can't read that, you need a bigger screen. But basically, as I've been watering, obviously I come back and say, what's been watered and what with. Um, that's farther over there. Um, but this is the sort of thing I've been doing. So I've been looking at rationalising and some will be sold. Don't all jump at me and say, I want that one, I want that one. I want. I'll do a video of those that are going to be sold a bit later in the year and then we'll discuss who's having what. <laughs> Not yet. Um, but this Bifrenaria I'm just fed up with waiting for that to bloom. 
it's a healthy plant, so I'm happy to sell that on. My Brassia tessa, the big plant that I had, part of it decided to rot. And I took off the two leads and one of those decided to rot. But one of them is doing okay. So it's a single bulb. I'm not prepared to wait for that to get back to blooming size because I've got other Brassia types. So even though I've had that one a hell of a long time, there's a single bulb that soon should have a new growth. When it's got a new growth, uh, we'll discuss it. Um, my Brassavolas uh, have had enough. Um, the Rhyncholalia glauca, I don't think I'm ever going to get to bloom. So I'm selling that. It's a healthy plant. Should push out some new growth soon. My two Brassavola propers, the hybrid David Sanders and the Nodosa, are iffy plants. They are not happy plants. Um, I'm not passing on plants that I'm not happy with to anybody else. So I'm watching those closely. They may end up getting dumped. Bulbophyllums, yes and no. Okay, some of these were gifts. Thank you, Archie. But a lot of them are just not for me. You have to try these things to know. Um, the Delatescans did actually bloom. So I've seen that one bloom. Wasn't that impressed, I must admit. Um, the Crassipes, possibly, because Archie wasn't sure whether that was its name, and the Deary Eye. Um, these three are not big, you know, giant plants pushing on at a rate of knots, but they're sort of okay for somebody to bring on. My Bulbophyllum Phalaenopsis is a single big fat bulb with a leaf that's probably about 15 inches long. Um, it did attempt to bloom and failed. It then attempted to push up a new growth and that failed. But it now has a pot full of roots, but I don't see any signs of a new growth. That will be a pig to look after. It must stay warm and it must stay out of bright light. And it likes good humidity and they do best mounted. Well, trying to mount that is going to be a right pain because ideally the leaf should be upside down and at the moment it's in a pot sticking bulk, bolt upright and that's how it's been grown. What else have we got then? Um, these two Cattleya hybrids are the manky pieces that I've been desperately trying to recover. They're all, I'm obviously suspicious of those two. I'm not happy that they've fully recovered and I'm pretty confident the original plant had Fusarium. So I seriously keeping my eye on them but the only reason I'm keeping them is because I promised one to somebody but they're not getting it until I'm confident it's healthy again um, this rose pixie pinafore has been iffy for some time but it's just starting to push up some new growths depending on the results of that that may have to go I've got duplicates well obviously I don't need two I'm trying to gain some space so I've got the Cristata lemoniar lemoniana that we've been looking at lately that's in bloom and another pot full almost identical that I can sell. I've got two Cilogeny Fimbriatas, two pot fulls, both pushing up nice new growths. I don't need both, so another one to sell. There won't be many problems down the dendrobium list. <laughs> but um, this Thai Angel um, is a kiki off of the one that's currently in bloom, Phalaenopsis type. Very attractive blooms. I've got a kiki that's just growing, so there's one of those. And then there's a, a Dendrobium Phalaenopsis that I think is a deep purple, uh, white with a deep purple center. Um, but I'm not sure, and it hasn't bloomed for a while. Well, I don't want it. Somebody else wants to take it on. And then we get to this one. That means in bright purple, it's gone. It's been disposed of. Yeah, so it's gone. I've been playing with that plant for so long, I'm absolutely fed up with it, and it will not grow. Um, the giant spring dream of pollen, I'm happy to pass that on to somebody else, healthy plant, and I'll bring on the kikis that were a present from Rachel. Stardust Firebird has actually got some buds on it. I've just, it'll be in another video that I'm doing. Um, I'm still not keeping it. It's no good trying to bloom to save your sorry ass. You're going, mate. I don't like you. But um, Kingy Anums do not float my boat. Um, two of the new plants out of the big box full were Kingy Anums, very young plants, so I don't really want those. Plus, I have um, one that's growing on that's. Um, Never truly been identified as Kingianum, but it's a Kingianum type hybrid, so those three can go because they, they, they're just not my thing, basically. 
Unfortunately, Dendrobium harveyanum, the yellow frilly one, is now a suspicious plant. New growths, the leaves on the new growths are not ripe. So I'm keeping the eye on that one. Um, I have actually got some kikis of that growing. Uh, if there's a problem that's virus related in a plant, it's no good taking kikis off it. They'll be infected as well. But I should be able to tell whether it was just a problem with bugs and leaf markings because the kikis will be clean. But that's a watch and see. Um, my Encyclia prismacata is a big plant. It's got two growths on that may even bloom, I don't know, but it's a strappy plant, it's never actually bloomed for me, and I've decided I don't want it anymore. Now, unfortunately, that's in a holy clay pot, and you're not having that. <laughs> so it'll probably get bare-rooted, and you'll have to pot it up. But later in the year, I might even repot it myself. Um, the Maxillaria arachnitifloras have been condemned, so they've been disposed of. The new growths were coming up just as bad as some of the older leaves. Unfortunately, my Lisa, Melissa Briony has gone down, um, just never recovered from being repotted, and I can't be bothered. If I want that one again, I can get it. It's not that difficult to get hold of. Um, this Banfield Ara Gilded Tower Mystic Maze was the one that fell out of the pot in the lounge. And quite honestly, I've changed my mind. Having repotted it and seen the roots, that stays. So that comes off the list. Now, uh, my odontoglossum types are going nowhere, even though a lot of them are in the state of recovery. I like them too much, so I'm willing to give those the chance. What else we got? Paphiopedalums can stay. I haven't got many. They don't get in the way, because they live on a shelf that hasn't got much else on it, so they don't get in the way. Phalaenopsis, those I've got for now I'll keep. Um, the Prosthetia garciana got eaten by scale. It's never looked very good. It now is pushing some new growth. So I need to see whether those are ni nice and clean and healthy. If they are, that gets to stay. The Prosthetia green hornet has been going downhill for well over a year. And whatever I do, it will not recover. So I've got fed up with that. That's gone. It's an easily replaced plant. My two radiators, nice healthy plants, but they have quite long rhizomes between the growths. Um, so it's a little bit of a rambler. Um, it's also quite large. The blooms are gorgeous and very fragrant, and it blooms reliably every year once on the latest growths. There's two of those. They might be better potted together in a single pot, grown in opposite directions, but uh, they're going to go. Um, that's about it, there isn't, uh, oh yeah, this um, big blue vanda with the bad markings that, I'm still on the fence, I'm still not sure whether that's cold damage or a serious problem, so I'm just watching it and keeping it separate. And my Ranko stylus giganteas, the leaves have been steadily getting more and more desiccated, despite it getting hydrated every single day, and the leaves are a ridiculously pale colour with stripes on them, so they are highly suspicious and I think they may just have to go. Uh, yeah, so that, that's what I'm doing. And to make sure I don't forget any decisions I've made, I've updated my notes with a marker. So that's the sort of thing I'm up to. I haven't finished yet. So although I've had yesterday I was watering and today I was watering, I still haven't finished. I've still got some more watering to do. So that list is not complete yet. But you get the general gist. Okay, and uh, I'll see you next time.